Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is telangiectasias, hemangiomas, and arteriovenous malformations. This is the part three of the lecture which I have started uh, two times back, and that was regarding the disorders of arteries and vein. So this will be the last lecture of that chapter. I am Brigadier Retired Usher Ahmed Mashood, Professor of Dermatology and Aesthetic Medicine. And you can follow me on my Instagram and email me or message me on my WhatsApp number. Telling Dictasias. Telling Dictasias comes from the Latin word tell which means ant, and angios means vessels, and ectasis means expansion. That means the chronically and dilated vessels. And telangiectasia represents the dilation, expansion, or stretching of pre existing vessels without any apparent new vessel growth or angiogenesis. So it is primarily the expansion and dilation of pre-existing vessels and not angiogenesis. Telangiectasias appear on skin and mucous membranes as small, dull red, linear, stellate, or punctate markings. You have all seen telangiectasias many times in your patients. The telangiectasias are bracketed with spider angiomas or spider nevi, and capillary aneurysms or venous lakes, whereas the vascular malformations represents anomalies of embryological development, which is due to some disturbance in vasculogenesis and angiogenesis. So as far as the uh, malformations are concerned, these are not simple dilatation of vessels, but these are the anomalies in arteries and veins that date back to the embryological era. Uh, the telangiectasias can be classified as primary and secondary telangiectasias. The primary telangiectasias are generalized essential telangiectasias, hereditary benign telangiectasias, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasias, unilateral nevoid telangiectasias, ataxia telangiectasia, Bloom syndrome, so so many uh, so many um, syndromes carrying the words telangiectasias, uh, nevus flamus, angiomas and angiokeratomas, angioma serpiginosum, then uh, spider, nevi, nevus anemicus, cutis marmoreta, and solitary plaque like telangiectatic glomangiomas. The secondary telangiectasias, these are the telangiectasias that develop secondary to some pathology. So any reason of prolonged vasodilatation like rosacea, venous disease, calcium channel blocking drugs and smoking may lead to telangiectasias. Then chronic UV exposure as in aged skin or post irradiation may lead to telangiectasias. Then it can be post traumatic. It can be atrophy on the skin due to steroids or because of poikiloderma. Telangiectasias are seen in several collagen vascular disease, especially scleroderma and, and dermatomyositis. Then it's also a part of Raynaud's phenomena, crest syndrome, lupus erythematosus. Mastocytosis has a presentation known as telangiectasias macul uh, macularis eruptiva perstans. HIV infection, and there are several other genodermatoses that are associated with telangiectasias. So we are we will take up the first telangiectasia, that is the spider telangiectasias or spider angiomas, a very common, common happening. It's a common vascular lesion found on the skin of upper body. It can be solitary, it can be multiple. Their characteristic appearance is a central red arteriole that is surrounded by a circular pattern of thin walled vessels 
which look like a multiple leg of a spider. So a central arteriole and several uh, small tributaries running out from the center, just like a spider. The spider telangiectasias occur in 15% of completely normal persons and seen frequently in healthy children. It is common in women, especially pregnant and those on oral contraceptives. And they are characteristically found in patients with liver disease and thyrotoxicosis. So pregnancy, contraceptive pill, liver disease and thyrotoxicosis are a few common causes of spider telangiectasias. The lesion consists of a central ascending spiral thick walled arteriole and uh, beneath the epidermis from the ampulla thin walled branch channels radiate peripherally uh, in the papillary dermis. Clinical features. The lesion appears suddenly. They are asymptomatic but can be a cosmetic issue. Uh, as told before, can be single or multiple, usually 1 to 1.5 millimeter in diameter. Central body is raised, is pulsatile on dioscopy, and on dioscopy, central arteriole is compressed. The skin bleaches and uh, uh, bleaches and skin temporarily and the uh, spider telangiectasias temporarily vanish but it returns back once the pressure is relieved. Sight are usually upper body, including neck, face, arm, and chest, uh, usually in the territory of superior vena cava, and often on hands and fingers in children. Sometimes at the site of trauma, maybe unilateral, rarely occur on mucous membranes, nose, and lips. So, um, this, it's a, generally they are benign lesions, but they can... Uh, be cause bleeding due to trauma. But if we apply pressure, then the bleeding stops. And there can be a reason of liver disease. And number of telangiectasias, if more than 20 and size more than 15 millimeter, and atypical distribution lower body, then predict the severity of liver disease. And such patients are also at risk of having bleeding um, varices. Lesions can resolve spontaneously. Uh, it usually disappears at the end of pregnancy or when the liver condition is resolved or treated. Differential diagnoses include hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasias, but there the lesions are macular or linear and they are neither uh, spider like nor pulsatile. Investigations. So since we know of the known causes, we would like to investigate on those lines. Healthy children, adult single lesion, no investigation is needed. For multiple lesions, examine for clinical signs of pregnancy, liver disease or thyrotoxicosis, and uh, do the relevant investigations like uh, full blood count, liver function test, autoantibody screening, hepatitis serology, thyroid function test, and alpha fetoprotein. and investigate further like liver ultrasound if liver tests are abnormal. Management. First line, conservative approach, uh, since the lesions dissolve spontaneously, so wait and see, identify and treat the underlying disease and cosmetic camouflage. Second line is electrodesiccation, a very simple procedure. Um, uh, the central arteriole is uh, treated with um, uh, electrocautery, there is a risk of depressed scar if overtreated. Laser 5185 nanometer pulse dye laser uh, produce clearance but may recur. So may sometimes require another treatment. So the benefit of laser over electrodesiccation is that it would not leave a scar. Then the second telangiectasia is again a very common telangiectasia that is cherry angiomas or Campbell D. Morgan spots. Campbell D. Morgan spots are common cherry red papules seen in the skin due to abnormal vascular proliferation. The entire they, they are entirely benign and they increase in number with age. There is no difference between sex and prevalence, um, sex in the prevalence of cherry and geomas. And they are more obvious in um, patients with the skin type 1 and 2. And uh, they appear to increase in pregnancy again. The cherry angiomas are true capillary hemangiomas formed by numerous newly formed capillaries 
with narrow lumen and prominent endothelial cells arranged in lobular pattern like you can see here. Exposure to chemicals such as bromide, solvents and mustard gas are associated with development of cherry angiomas. They may be single or multiple. There are two cherry angiomas here, usually on face and upper arm and trunk. Start as a pinprick size lesion and gradually grow. They appear as round to oval, bright red, doom shaped papules and pinpoint macules, which are varying from one millimeter in diameter to several millimeter in diameter, which can be substantially large as well. Differential diagnoses include angiokeratomas, infantile hemangiomas, basal angiomatosis if they are multiple, and blue rubber bleb nevus syndrome. Complications, if traumatized, they can bleed and uh, look for underlying causes in such cases. The lesions are benign and increase in number with age. Investigation. The diagnosis is usually made clinically, but biopsy confirms the doubtful cases. No treatment is needed, but most cases they are benign and asymptomatic for those lesions which you need cosmetically uh, removal or uh, they are causing bleeding, you can go for high frication, cryotherapy or PDL and rarely shave excision. Then the third condition, again a very common condition which we, we are going to discuss uh, is the angiokeratomas. Angiokeratomas are small benign cutaneous vascular lesions which present as red or blue or purple papules. Angiokeratomas are not true angiomas. They are characterized by superficial vascular ectasia and overlying uh, acanthosis and hyperkeratosis. So there are two conditions as the name signifies. There is keratosis and there is, there is dilatation of uh, vessel or vascular ectasia. So angio and keratoma can be solitary or multiple. There are many clinical types like angiokeratoma of mibili, a solitary lesion, acral skin, then angiokeratoma of four eyes, multiple lesions on scrotal skin, angiokeratoma corporis diffusum, also known as the Febris disease, then angiokeratoma circumscriptum, which is usually congenital and associated with nevus flimus and cavernous hemangioma. So angiokeratoma circumscriptum, it is solitary and asymptomatic benign lesion, can be congenital or acquired and most often seen in childhood or early adulthood. Female male ratio is three ratio one, no ethnic variation. They are benign and resolve spontaneously. It may coexist with Clipper-Tononi syndrome with nevus flimus with cavernous hemangioma and traumatic arteriovenous fistulas. They are not thought to be genetically determined. So you can see here, it, it is a solitary lesion. Multiple lesions can also occur and seen mainly on lower extremity. It is not as red as cherry angioma, but it is rather red and blue in color with rough surface. May appear black if it is the vessels are thrombosed or if they have bled. So it can be a papule, it can be a plaque, large asymptom, they are largely asymptomatic, but patient usually present, especially the fair skin individual, present to the dermatologist with a fear of malignant melanoma. Dioscopy is very, very characteristic and it reveal multiple blood-filled vascular spaces. Pathology. There is a thin layer of hyperkeratosis. You can see hyperkeratosis and then acanthosis. And there are dilated, multiple dilated, thin walled vascular spaces filled with blood in the papillidermis and circled by the retiridges. So, this is the pathology of angiokeratoma. Investigation. If there are multiple lesions, Febris disease should be considered and genetic testing undertaken. Management. None is necessary if the lesions are asymptomatic. If there are diagnostic difficulty, then surgical excision. Other treatment modalities include hyfrication and cryotherapy. There are different lasers like argon, carbon dioxide, erbium. 
but KTP laser or 800 nanometer diode laser appear to be both effective with least scarring. So KTP laser, 532 nanometer laser can be used in this condition to treat. Venous lakes. Venous lakes are composed of dilated venules. Their dark purple or blue papules appear on the face, lip and ear of elderly, entirely benign and may mimic melanoma like angiokeratomas. Mainly occur in elderly and mean, mean age of reporting is 65 and 76.7 years. Some male predom predominance like 1.5 ratio 1, sunshine, aging and smoking may be the potentiating factors. Significant increase in solar keratosis in patient with venous lake. This is an association. Dioscopy. Dioscopy also reveal characteristic appearance that is bluish vascular spaces. Just like red vascular spaces in cherry and tumor, they are bluish vascular spaces in venous lake. If we go for histopathology, then you can see several dilated venous channels, venules, which consist of single layer of flattened endothelial cells with a thick wall of fibrous tissue surrounding. Patient usually present with a painless dark purple or blue papule on the lip, which be bleed if traumatized. Other common sites are ear and face. Papule are soft and compressible. Cosmetically, they can be an issue to patients. Untreated, if untreated, it would persist. Differential diagnosis, the fact that they can empty it by compression usually excludes melanoma. So, dioscopy should be performed uh, clinically if we are examining the venous lake. And cherry angiomas and angiokeratoma can be similar. Management, the only treated uh, treatment is offered a patient having a problem like bleeding or if it's cosmetically disabling, lesion can be excised, treated with cryotherapy, electrocautery, or laser ablation. Many different lasers are used like argon, carbon dioxide, PDL, and potassium titanium phosphate KTP laser. Now we are discussing a few uh, primary telangiectasias, um, Relatively common occurrence, angioma serpiginosum is the first. It is asymptomatic rare nevoid disorder affecting small vessels of upper derms. It's a benign vascular condition that is characterized by small red puncta that cluster together in linear serpiginous or gyrate pattern, chiefly on the lower limb in female. The condition may present at birth often start in childhood. 90% of cases occur in female. So female predominance. There is no racial predilection. This is a clinical picture on the right side. There can be one or more small lesions grow over a period of months or years, probably on the limbs and extremities, but can be extensive like you can see extensive lesions in this patient not reported on hands and mucosa. On close examination, they are pinpoint violaceous or red macules, which are non-blanching, that is important. Grouped, few centimeters, sometimes large sheets. You can see the pinpoint um, papules or macules, non-blanching, and they are uh, grouped and in form of sheets. Can have other configuration like annular, serpiginous, or linear. There is no bleeding, inflammation, or pigmentation. That dermoscopy, well demarcated, red oval or round lagoons can be seen. Histopathology, which shows that the affected papillae, the dermal papillae, are distended by large, small ectatic capillaries lined by flattened endothelial cells, like seen in the picture. Most cases are sporadic. Uh, both autosomal dominant and X linked dominant inheritance is recorded. Lesions often stop growing at puberty and remain unchanged and they resolve partially. Treatment is only for cosmetic reasons. Cosmetic camouflage is helpful if you are not offering anything. 
But if you are offering a treatment, that would be a pulse dye laser and even IPL can be tried. Now, another common uh, telangiectasia, a primary telangiectasia is the generalized essential telangiectasia. This is a syndrome of, um, again, primary telangiectasia with widespread cutaneous distribution. Benign, not inherited condition, arrangement is into sheets and there is lack of bleeding from the lesions. Again, start in childhood or early adult life and again common in women. No racial predilection, no genetic basis and no disease association. There is dilatation of capillaries with some dilated post-capillary venules. Environmental factor, usually unknown, but female hormone trauma and UVB are postulated to have a role. History, eruption frequently start in lower limb, but spread to form red confluent sheet comprising of blanching telangiectasias. Tingling and numbness have been reported. So, uh, compared to NGO, compared to um, the, um, which was the previous condition, uh, angioma serpiginosum, the generalized essential telangiectasias are more diffusely spread, they are darker. Uh, red or uh, pink linear telangiectasias arranged in groups. So, uh, distribution is similar to uh, the previous condition, where it's mainly on the angioma uh, serpiginosum, uh, mainly on the legs and uh, mainly on the legs and extremities. The sheeted telangiectasias are usually fixed but may blanch on pressure. The differential diagnosis include hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasias, hereditary benign telangiectasias, and telangiectasias triggered by calcium channel blocker. It's a benign condition, progressive, but the lesion may become fixed with time. Management is for cosmetic concerns. Skin camouflage cream may be used, and as far as the treatment is concerned, PDL and NDIAC treatment is often attempted. Since the lesion is so widespread, multiple treatment is needed. Sclerotherapy is not feasible due to very small size of the um, vessels involved in the lesion. Then hereditary benign telangiectasias. This is lighter in color as compared to angioma serpiginosum and generalized essential telangiectasias. And it has a dominant inheritance characterized by excessive telangiectasias resembling generalized essential telangiectasias occurring in childhood and uh, more on light exposed skin, distinct from hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasias by lack of bleeding. Although the lesions do appear related to atriovenous anastomosis as seen in hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasias. Then there is another condition called as the unilateral nevoid telangiectasias. This, in this case, the telangiectasias are in blushpoid distribution, can be congenital or acquired. Congenital form develop shortly after neonatal period or during the neonatal period. Acquired form starts at puberty or during pregnancy or liver disease or thyrotoxicosis. Congenital form is commoner in male. Acquired form is commoner in female. Blaschkoid distribution suggests that there is genetic mosaicism. Here you can see this unilateral nevoid telangiectasias distributed in third and fourth cervical dermatome. Other sites are face, neck, shoulder, and arms. Sometimes there are paler ring or anemic halo surrounding the telangiectasias. Lesions are blanched on pressure. No, treat, no investigation is required. Liver function and pregnancy tests are helpful. Skin biopsy if a diagnostic dilemma, which is of course not. No treatment necessary, a benign condition. Only the concern will be cosmetic. So cosmetic camouflage can be done. If patient is pregnant or contraceptive pill, then weight till estrogen levels are normal. PDL are effective, but 
recurrence is common. Now we are going to discuss an, another subject, a different subject, uh, and that is the arteriovenous malformations. Arteriovenous malformations are uh, fast flowing vascular lesions composed of malformed arterial and venous vessels connected directly to one another without an intervening capillary bed. Atriovenous malformations can occur throughout the body in many different organs and can be fatal in certain instances. Dermatologists encountered atriovenous malformation when the vasculature affected involves the skin or mucosal surfaces or as an association of hereditary hemorrhagic telling atresia. Approximately half are visible in the neonatal period and other become apparent in childhood and adolescence. And they are equal in incidence in female and male. Uh, the conditions which are associated with atriovenous malformation include Parker-Weber syndrome. We will discuss it in detail. It is soft tissue and bony hypertrophy associated with atriovenous malformation, usually seen on the extremities. And then hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, it's an autosomal dominant condition characterized by epistaxis, telangiectasia, which are multiple and at sites like lip and oral cavity, finger and nose. Visceral lesions are seen as gastrointestinal telangiectasia. So the lungs, liver, GI tract, CNS uh, are the usual site, and this may result in massive visceral hemorrhages and death. Cop syndrome, it's a capillary malformation on the skin along the midline of the back. The site is intraspinal, corresponding to the dermatomal distribution of overlying capillary malformation. Atrial vena malformation consists of arteries connecting directly to the veins without intervening capillary bed. So this connection is called as the nidus. It is postulated that during the early fatal development of failure of regression of atriovenous channels in the primitive plexus or due to aberration in transforming growth factor beta signaling pathway. So all this pathology occur during embryonic development. And uh, as mentioned, the main pathology is that arteries and veins are directly connected with each other through, um, through a connection which is called as the nidus. And there is no intervening capillary bed between the two. Clinical features of AV malformation, history 40 to 60% are visible at birth, 30% become apparent at childhood, most common at head and neck, there is excessive warmth in the lesions and there is pain and bleeding episodes. Uh, as you can see, the overlying skin feels warm. There are prominent vessels. There is a palpable thrill. Auscultation of the lesions should detect a machinery murmur. Complications include hemorrhages, ischemia, chronic venous insufficiency, pain, cosmetic deformity, limb growth, uh, asymmetry, high output cardiac failure, and problems related to lesions such as impaired vision, difficulty in eating or breathing, and limb fractures. Disease cause and arteriovenous malformation grow with child. They do not regress. And uh, it is not known how to predict which patient will go on stage 3 or 4. Morbidity and mortality depends upon the location, size of the lesion. Both determine its treatability. 
and presence of severe complications such as heart failure. Investigations include ultrasound with color Doppler, which shows low resistance, high velocity arterial flow. Atriovenous shunting is seen within the tortuous vessels. To evaluate the extent of AV malformation, MRI and MRA, which is magnetic resonance angiography, demonstrate the collection of vascular flow. Atriovenous malformation in a network can be delineated. If patient is bleeding, full blood count and clotting studies are also essential. Multidisciplinary approach is uh, called for in the management. Treatment is curative, but uh, is generally uh, palliative. Aim of surgery is curative. It is possible for small and accessible lesions, but not possible for larger lesions. Sometimes embolization is performed. Embolization. Temporary occlude the nidus with either glue or coil, and it is palliative for bleeding, pain, and control of heart failure prior to surgery. Sclerotherapy. Alcohol is injected into the nidus. Sclerotherapy is also palliative. When to treat? For stage 1 and 2, AV malformation in infancy and early childhood, there is no treatment. When child grows older, some clinicians offer surgical resection if cosmetic results are predictable. Follow-up again is essential. For stage 3 and 4, excision and reconstruction where possible should be considered. For too deep and extensive lesions, only the palliative treatment like embolization or partial resection is attempted. Venous malformations. Unlike the atriovenous malformation, the simple venous malformations are slow-flowing, non-proliferative vascular birthmarks and composed of anomalous ectatic venous channels. They are commonest of vascular anomalies. They are enormous clinically, ranging from single small superficial lesion to deep extensive lesion. Can be single or multiple, arise on the skin and mucosa, and involve limb, GI tract, and craniofacial areas. They may be asymptomatic or a major problem for the patient in pain, bleeding, and disfigurement being the commonest complication. Most cases of venous malformations are sporadic and have been, uh, there have been familial cases. Venous malformations are relatively common and incidence is 1 in 4%. The lesions are always present at birth but may not become clinically apparent. No sex difference. Association. Patient with Turner syndrome may have venous malformation of intestine and feet. Blue rubber blab nevus syndrome, there can be cutaneous and GI venous malformation with risk of GI hemorrhage. Then Mafusi syndrome is characterized by venous malformation on extremities and dyschondroplasia resulting from enchondromas. So the vascular channels of venous malformations are irregular, have narrow lumen lined by flattened endothelial cells and lack smooth muscle cells. They are usually visible at birth, sometimes as blue-purple mark, more obvious later in age. They grow with the child. Presentation is soft blue compressible mass, more prominent with exercise or when the area is held dependent. There is no palpable thrill as we see in AV malformation. One of the clinical variants is glomangioma. Glomangioma is small, firm blue papule or large pebbly plaque, which is tender to touch and shows anomalous venous channels lined by cuboidal glomus cells. The channels are more than the cuboidal cells. Other differential include hemangiomas. Complication, there can be pain, there can be thrombosis, Localized intravascular coagulopathy, bleeding, cervicofacial lesion cause AV, airway obstruction, speech and dental abnormalities. Limb lesions involve muscle, bone and joints with functional difficulty, deformity and pain. Disease course and prognosis. It never regresses spontaneously. Prognosis depends on the lesions, depth, extent and involvement of other organs. So to investigate MRI, which is helpful in showing the extent of the lesion, the contrast enhances differentiation from 
on enhancing lymphatic malformation. CT scan will delineate the fibrolytes, and Doppler ultrasound confirms the low flow compared to high flow in AV malformation. Treatment or option. Compression garment, if limb lesions to reduce the pain, protect the overlying skin, limit the swelling, decrease localized intravascular coagulation. For larger lesions, sclerotherapy with 59-95% ethanol, small lesions are injected with 1% sodium tetradecyl sulfate. NDAG or endovenous lasers, mainly for mucosal lesions. Surgery may be curative for small lesions on debulking in large lesions. Varicose hemangiomas. They are congenital vascular anomalies made up of dermal and subcutaneous capillary vascular component with overlying warty surface and regarded as vascular malformation. Rare condition, prevalence unknown, usually noted at birth, but uh, obvious by two years, equal incidence in male and female and no racial predilection. Lesions show an overlying epidermal hyperkeratosis like in enchukeratomas. There's papillomatosis, irregular acanthosis, and underlying dilated capillary vascular channels in dermis, and often in subcutaneous. So the lesions are deep. Uh, clinical feature, 70% in the lower limb, but lesion can involve upper limb and trunk. Our uh, lesions initially are non-keratotic, soft and bluish in color, but as the time grows, uh, they become plaques, vascular linear vascular plaques becomes because they become hyperkeratotic and verrucous, and size from few to twenty five centimeter in diameter. Differential diagnoses are endocarotoma, circumscribed lymphangiomas. Complications are ulceration and infection. Disease course and prognosis. Unlike infantile hemangiomas, they do not undergo spontaneous regression and grow with proportion of child growth. Investigation. Skin biopsy and MRI management. Surgery is the treatment of choice. Most lesions can be excised in single procedure or done in stages. If lesions are deep, excision is incomplete and recurrence can be a problem. When excision is not possible, NDIAG laser for plaques and PDL for patches help improve the appearance and relieve the symptoms. Then we are going to discuss some disorders which are associated with the venous malformation. Uh, the first is the Clippertinoni syndrome. It is a triad comprising of capillary malformation like port wine stain, then soft tissue and bony overgrowth or hypertrophy and varicose veins with or without deep venous and lymphatic abnormalities. And it is diagnosed if uh, any of the two, uh, any of among the three, any of the two uh, pathologies are present. KT, KTS is most commonly involving the lower limb, following by, followed by arm and trunk and head and neck. It is rare incidence, one ratio 10,000. A congenital anomaly which is present at birth but clinically may present late in the childhood. There is no sex difference in incidence of KTS. Pathogenesis is not truly elucidated. Increased angiogenesis appears to be pivotal. History. 98% of KTS present as capillary or vascular malformation. So this is the most common presentation, usually at birth. Then 72% present with abnormal veins, which are not visible until the child is walking and cause pain, ulceration, and thrombosis. Only 67 present as hypertrophy, of uh, bone and uh, muscle. 63% have all the three features and 37% have two out of the three features. Presentation is like a port wine stain on the limb, pink or reddish stain, linear border, darken as uh, age, as the lesion ages. 10% are nodular and does not cross the midline. There are dilated tortuous vein which are associated. There is hypertrophy of affected limb as increase in limb girth or length, bone and soft tissue enlargement. They may have hand and feet abnormalities like macrodactyly, syndactyly, ectodactyly, clinodactyly, and camptodactyly. Lymphedema is also seen. Variants, simple KTS, blotchy or segmental port wine, 
with venous malformation and hypertrophy complex GTS. There will be a geographic port body stain, venous malformations and hypertrophy, high risk of lymphatic involvement, increased risk of complications. Differential diagnosis is Proteus syndrome, Bunyan, uh, Bunyan um, Rayleigh, Revo Kabbalah syndrome, and Mufusi syndrome. Complication and comorbidity is a long list. In the skin, it causes stasis, dermatitis, ulcer, and secondary infection. Veins can cause thrombosis and thrombophilobitis. Hemorrhage and pulmonary embolism. There can be hypertrophy of limb, may lead to subsequent vertebral scoliosis, gait problem, premature onset of degenerative joint disease. The rare complications are many. Investigations. clipper tenoni syndrome is often diagnosed on the basis of history and examination. Investigated by duplex ultrasound scanning, MRI, and X-ray. Venogram may be required to delineate the venous abnormalities and exclude deep vein agenesis. Management is by compression garment to prevent and treat chronic venous insufficiency, lymph edema, and recurrent cellulitis and bleeding. Orthotics or orthopedic help is sought for a small difference in limb length with heel inserts can be used. Large differences need osteotomies, epiphysiodesis, and epiphyseal stapling. Then there should be oral contraceptive should be avoided to reduce the risk of thrombosis and consider anticoagulant prophylaxis for patient prior to surgical procedure or long flights. Pain management for pain management, refer to pain clinic. Lasers to treat capillary malformation, there's port wine, usually PDL is used. For varicosities, endovenous laser is used. Uh, surgery is done for venous malformations and varicosities by venous strippings, ligations, excisions, and sclerotherapy. Amputation is the last resort for intractable bleeding, pain, and ulceration. So the second and the last topic to be uh, second syndrome uh, associated with venous malformation and the last topic is Parker-Weber syndrome. The syndrome is a combined vascular malformation similar to clipper tenoni, but it is characterized by atriovenous fistula. There is varicosities and hypertrophy of the affected extremity. Unlike KTS, musculoskeletal involvement is less prominent. It is present from birth with equal incidence in male and female. There is a mutation in gene RAS-A1 and identified on chromosome 5Q. 70% of port wine stain occur on the lower limb but may involve upper limb, head and neck. Tissue overgrowth lead to limb enlargement and continues past puberty and gets progressively worse. Frequently bone involvement rather than soft tissue overgrowth. Atriovenous malformation may not appear until puberty or after trauma. There are pulsatile swelling, obvious, and uh, with discoloration of overlying skin, and large veins are radio radiating from this AV malformation. Underlying skin feel warm, prominent vessels with palpable thrill. Auscultation of lesion will reveal a murmur, which is a machinery murmur, and there is obvious asymmetry of the limb, as seen in the picture. Clinical variance is Clough syndrome in which there are congenital lipomatous overgrowth along with vascular malformation. Then differential diagnosis, clipper tenoni and proteus. Main risks are uh, due to atriovenous fistula with tissue ischemia and high output cardiac failure. Investigation to confirm the diagnosis and monitor the treatment, ultrasound, Doppler examination, MRI and MRA is done. Management, a multidisciplinary approach is essential with uh, vascular surgeon, invasive radiologist, pediatrician, and dermatologist. Treatment is frequently palliative. Sclerotherapy, embolization, and surgery are all options. Then orthotics and compression garments may help in uh, relieving the limb symptoms. So this brings to end of this talk. I really thank you for your patient listening and I hope to see you very soon with another edition of my lecture. Thank you and goodbye.